Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to take a look at synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. Now I've chosen these pictures here because they actually show the essence of these types of reactions. So on the top we have a synthesis reaction where we take many different things and bring them together to make one final product. And then below we have a decomposition reaction where we have one reactant and it breaks apart into many different things. So we have three learning goals for today. The first is to identify synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. The next is to complete synthesis reactions or decomposition react reactions when you're missing one of the reactants or one of the products. And to balance synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. So let's start off with our synthesis reactions. They take the form A plus B come together to make AB. So two separate reactants, or it could be more than two, but you have separate reactants that come together to make one single product. So when we're trying to identify a synthesis reaction, we always look at the product side, and if we see just one single product, then we know we're dealing with a synthesis reaction. And I've given an example there with zinc and sulfur to give us zinc sulfide. Let's take a look at our decomposition reactions now. Here they take the form AB, so one compound, breaking apart into A and B. So you start with one reactant and it breaks into multiple different products. Now the key for identifying a decomposition reaction is to look on the reactant side and you should see only one reactant. If there's one reactant, then you're dealing with a decomposition reaction. And I've shown an example there. If you'll notice, it's actually the flip from the synthesis reaction. So it's zinc sulfide breaking apart into zinc and sulfur. And that's actually what happens all synthesis and decomposition reactions. They're just the opposite uh, rules from each other to identify them and to, to find out what type of reaction you're dealing with. So how are we going to um, identify missing elements that are inside of a synthesis or decomposition reaction? So if we're trying to predict missing reactants or missing uh, products. We'll start off by looking for elements that are only on one side and then filling them in on the other side. If that element happens to be diatomic, then you'll write the subscript too. So that goes for any of the halogens, so all of that column of the periodic table, all of the halogens, also oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. All of those are diatomic. And then for ionic compounds, if we're creating an ionic compound, we need to balance the charges. So we use our zero sum rule or our crossing over rule to make that a proper ionic compound. So let's take a look at a few examples here. Here we start off, we have one reactant breaking into two products. Since we're starting with one reactant, we know that we're dealing with a decomposition reaction. Now if we look, we have mercury and oxygen on the left, only oxygen on the right. That means we're missing mercury, so we can add that in here. Now mercury is a metal, it's standalone, it's not diatomic, so we can leave it as is. Now if we want to balance this reaction, we can see we have more oxygen on the right than on the left. So if we add our coefficient 2, and then that gives us some more mercury, so we need to add more mercury on the right with the coefficient 2, and now we're all balanced out with 2 mercury on each side and 2 oxygen on each side. Let's look at this one. We have one, two reactants giving us one product. Since we have one single product, we know we're dealing with a synthesis reaction. So here we have iron and oxygen on the right, only oxygen on the left, that means we're missing iron on the left. So now we can try to balance this equation. So again, uh, iron is a standalone metal, it's not diatomic, so we leave it as it is, so we're ready to balance. Here we have two oxygen on the left, three on the right. To balance that out, we put a three coefficient in front of the O2, and then a two coefficient in front of the iron three oxide. And now that changes the amount of iron. We have four on the right, so we need to have four on the left. And now we're all balanced for both our oxygen and our iron. Let's take a look at the next example. We have one, two reactants and one single product. One single product tells us that we're dealing with a synthesis reaction. So here we have sulfur and oxygen on the right, only sulfur on the left, so we need to add oxygen. 
Now we know that oxygen is diatomic, so we're going to add O2, put our subscript 2. And now if we want to balance, we see that we have 8 sulfur on the left, only 1 on the right, so we'll add a coefficient 8 on the right. That affects our oxygen. We have 8 times 2, 16 oxygen on the right, only 2 on the left. So if we add a coefficient 8, we now have 8 times 2, 16 oxygen on both sides. And then our last one here, we have one reactant and two products. Because we have one reactant, we know we're dealing with a decomposition reaction. We have sodium and chlorine on the right, which means we have sodium and chlorine on the left. Now if we do our crossing over or we do our zero sum, we can see that sodium has a one plus charge, chlorine a one negative charge. If we cross over or do zero sum, we realize that we need one of each. We don't write subscript one, so we end up with the formula NaCl. Now if we want to balance this, we see there's two chlorines on the right. We need two on the left, so we'll write a coefficient two in front of our sodium chloride. And that affects the amount of sodium, so we need a two in front of our sodium and now we're all balanced out. So these are how you'd solve this type of problem. Let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you identify synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions? Can you complete synthesis reactions or decomposition reactions when given all but one product or reactant? And can you balance synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.